Today we celebrate um, St. Kateri Tikakwitha, um, Native American, uh, also uh, adopted as a patron of the Paulist Fathers uh, because of her uh, roots in our country. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Here is a wise virgin from among the number of the prudent who went forth with lighted lamp to meet the Christ. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. We gather in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. As we bring ourselves under God's mercy, that we would live more powerfully the, the good news of Jesus the Christ, we pause for a moment and ask for forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you lived that we would live in love and faith. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you died that we would know God's justice and salvation. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you rose to glory that we would endure to the end and thus come to our own glory. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who desired the Virgin St. Kateri Tekakwitha to flower among Native Americans in a life of innocence, grant that through her intercession, that when all are gathered into your church from every nation, tribe, and tongue, signify you in a single canticle of praise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. Israel set out with all that was his when he arrived at Beersheba. He offered sacrifices to the God of his father, Isaac. There God, speaking to Israel in a vision by night, called, Jacob, Jacob, he answered, here I am. Then he said, I am God, the God of your father. Do not be afraid to go down to Egypt, for there I will make you a great nation. Not only will I go down to Egypt with you, I will also bring you back here, after Joseph has closed your eyes. So Jacob departed from Beersheba, and the sons of Israel put their father and their wives and children on the wagons that Pharaoh had sent for his transport. They took with them their livestock and the possessions they had acquired in the land of Canaan. Thus Jacob and all of his descendants migrated to Egypt. His sons and his grandsons, his daughters and his granddaughters, all his descendants, descendants he took with him to Egypt. Israel had sent Judah ahead to Joseph's so that he might meet him in Goshen. On his arrival in the region of Goshen, Joseph hitched the horses to his chariot and rode to meet his father Israel in Goshen. As soon as Joseph saw him, he flung himself on his neck and wept a long time in his arms. And Israel said to Joseph, At last I can die, now that I have seen for myself that Joseph is still alive. The word of the Lord. 
The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. Trust in the Lord and do good, that you may dwell in the land and be fed in security. Take delight in the Lord, and he will grant you your heart's requests. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. The Lord watches over the lives of the wholehearted. Their inheritance lasts forever. They are not put to shame in an evil time. In days of famine, they have plenty. The Lord watches over Thus from evil and do good, that you may abide forever. For the Lord loves what is right and forsakes not his faithful ones. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. The salvation of the just is from the Lord. He is their refuge in time of distress. And the Lord helps them and delivers them. He delivers them from the wicked and saves them because they take refuge in him. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. When the spirit of truth comes, alleluia, alleluia. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you to all truth and remind you of all I told you. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his apostles, Behold, I am sending you like sheep in the midst of wolves, so be shrewd as serpents and simple as doves. But beware of men, for they will hand you over to courts and scourge you in their synagogues, and you will be led before governors and kings for my sake as witnesses before them and the pagans. When they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say. You will be given at that moment what you are to say. For it will not be you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Brother will hand over brother to death, and the father his child. Children will rise up against parents and have them put to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but whoever endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to another. Amen, I say to you, you will not finish the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. The Gospel of the Lord. In today's scripture, of course, we have the continuation of the story of uh, Joseph and uh, uh, Jacob who comes to see, or I Jacob or Israel, who comes finally to see his son once again. Uh, I think the story shows us how there's an arrangement for the family in difficult times, a response to all that God has done Joseph had learned to move through trials and estrangement in his own life, even after he was sold into slavery, uh, yet he was always leaning on the God of his ancestors. Today, as we, uh, especially as people of this land, this country, as Americans, we celebrate Katiri Tekakwitha, who is the first uh, United States Native American to be canonized. Uh, you know, for such a long time she was blessed. I always remember in New York, there's an image of her in the bronze doors of St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York. Of course, she was from uh, uh, 
upstate New York. Her native name means she who bumps into things. Like the apostles on their missionary journeys, she certainly <laughs> bumped into a variety of obstacles in her life, especially trying to live out her faith. Uh, she was born in 1656 in what is now present-day uh, Orisville, New York, where there's a shrine. Uh, she was the daughter of a Christian Algonquin mother and a Mohawk chief who was not Christian, uh, who held to his native religions. But she was orphaned by the age of four. She was left disfigured because of smallpox and talking about bumping into things, she was partially blind. She made an early vow not to marry, which ran contrary to her culture, the culture of her people, and that caused her great personal difficulty. But she met Catholic Christian missionaries in 1667 for the first time, and uh, interestingly, she didn't immediately seek baptism. But eight years later, she met the Jesuit Father Jacques de Lamberville, uh, who baptized her on Easter Sunday, 1676, Perhaps this is why she became known as Lily of the Mohawks. You know, finding life in her village was stressful. Uh, she walked 200 miles to settle in a Christian mission in Saul Saint Louis uh, near Montreal. She led a very devout life. She attended daily mass. She fasted. She taught children, and she cared for the sick and the elderly. She died in. April of 1680. We often look to Christian saints, I think, to help us find hope so that we can overcome the obstacles that we deal with, or at least live with a certain integrity and perseverance. Jesus told his disciples in Matthew's Gospel today that they would be hated as they proclaimed his name. Um, knowing when Matthew was written, as it says, they were expecting that their missionary efforts would not be finished before the Son of Man comes. They were expecting the immediate return of Jesus. They were also beginning to experience persecution, where certain folks in families were deciding to become Christian, which was a great problem for the rest of the family, not unlike Kateri. Um, Things down through the centuries would become much more intense, especially by the fourth century. We all know that history about how many went to their deaths uh, because they refused to worship the Roman gods. Perhaps in many ways our life is a lot simpler, uh, and yet people do struggle to live their faith or to give witness. We always need to cling to hope. We would like to think that the message of Jesus would convince many people to find meaning in all that he promised. Uh, but history uh, often shows us otherwise, that people still struggle. They find a challenge. But here we are. We are the people who believe. You've gotten up. You've come to daily Eucharist. And I think we need to encourage one another. We are God's children. We are believers. And most of us, again, will not experience intense persecutions as those saints from the past, but yet hopefully we can learn from the past, especially with the way they dealt with their situations. We also pray that we would have a greater sensitivity for the uh, indigenous, indigenous people of this country. Uh, even though the intentions were good centuries ago, so much wrong was done. There was a lot of wonderful um, things in the native peoples, even in their own religions. Uh, yet, Kateri did decide to follow Jesus. She was touched somehow by the Holy Spirit in the depths of her heart. Hopefully, the faith and the example of all the saints would guide us into our future and that we could be modern-day uh, children of God who reach out to those in need and provide a witness to others.
Let us bring our prayers and the prayers of all peoples who struggle in the world before the Lord. For the church throughout the world to continually proclaim salvation in Christ Jesus while also respecting the goodness of local cultures and indigenous peoples, we pray to the Lord. For all natives of North America, our American Indian brothers and sisters of many tribes and nations, as they celebrate the power of Christ in one of their own in St. Kateri, and also for the mission of the Paulus Fathers here in North America, as they have embraced this saint as one of their patrons. We pray to the Lord. For nations experiencing tragedies of war, that God bring them strength, and that all who lead the countries of the world continue to make decisions that will safeguard human dignity as well as the power of God's creation as seen in the earth, which has long been respected by indigenous inhabitants. We pray to the Lord. And thinking of the needs of this planet, which is our home, God's gift to us, we pray for those who continue to suffer from the effects of climate change, including intense heat, tornadoes, overwhelming floods, and that we would continue to work with scientists to address the seriousness of this issue, we pray to the Lord. For the sick, the hospitalized, and all our friends, family, and colleagues who ask for our prayers and support, we pray to the Lord. For each of us to be refreshed in our faith and never to worry about what we are to say since we trust in the Spirit of God who will guide us into truth, the truth of our words, and the compassion of our actions, we pray to the Lord. And for all who have died, especially James L. Sheeran, for whom this Mass is offered, that all the deceased would now come into the peace of God's heavenly kingdom, we pray to the Lord. O oh, holy and gracious God, we bring you these prayers in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ the Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness. We have this bread to offer, gifts of the earth, work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable before our almighty and loving God. Lord, as we proclaim your wonders in the virgin, blessed Kateria Tekakwitha, we humbly implore your majesty that as her merits are pleasing to you, so too our dutiful service may find favor in your sight through Christ Jesus, our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. 
let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in the marvelous confession of the saints, you make your church fruitful with strength ever new. You offer us sure signs of your love, and that your saving, and that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled. Their great example lends us courage, and their fervent prayers sustain us in all that we do. And so, Lord, with the angels and the saints, we too give you thanks, as in exultation we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, Lord, to be glorified. For you love the human race. You always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Father most merciful, we pray, send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, Jesus took bread, he said the blessing, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, he gave you thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, gracious Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led to his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. We offer you the bread of life, the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ handed on to us. Grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Lord, bring your church, your people, to perfect faith and charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Blaise, our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, deacons, those in religious life, and the entire people you have made your own. We pray in a special way this day for all our native and indigenous brothers and sisters on this land and throughout the world. Open our eyes that we would see the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire us in words and in actions that we would comfort those who labor and are burdened. Allow us to serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. May your church stand as a living witness to truth, to freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised to a new hope. We pray in a special way for our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, especially as we remember your servant James. Bring him and all the dead whose faith you alone have known and admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection, give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we would come to the eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in the glorious communion of the saints, 
with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Holy Apostles, the Glorious Martyrs, with St. Kateri, and with all of the saints. We shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of the Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We turn to one another and offer some sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. There is one thing I ask of the Lord, only this do I seek, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God be with you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us go forth in God's peace to proclaim the gospel by witness of our lives. Of course, adoration of the Blessed Sacrament will follow. <laughs>